In this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at some more assessment style questions for 2391 and similar qualifications. Assessments can take many forms and the questions in this video all have multi-choice answers. Questions are designed to probe your understanding of electrical circuits and your ability to find the relevant information in the books and to calculate the answers. This video is the second in this mini-series from Learn Electrics about 2391 style assessments and we will follow the format that a typical assessment might take. You are presented with part of a schedule of test results and the eight questions that follow are all based around this and after each question we will show you how we arrived at the answer. Sufficient information to answer the question is provided in the chart and in the questions. This is open book and you will need the wiring regulations and the on-site guide together with a calculator, pencil and paper. You are asked to consider the four circuits shown in this table, part of a schedule of test results. We will assume that the wiring is correctly sized in twin and earth cable and do note that each circuit is protected by its own 30 milliamp RCBO. You will be expected to complete the blank spaces on this chart and answer relevant questions. On this page, we've shown the formulas that you will need in order to answer the questions. You must know these formulas. They are easy to use and so very essential to your trade. There is also a printable PDF available on our website with the formulas and this chart as just shown. You may find answering the questions easier with paper copies of these. To get copies, pause the video. Go to the website learnelectrics.com and enter P117 into the search box. Click on the link that will be shown on the page and the chart and the calculations will be available to you. Alternatively, just use a pencil and paper. Then restart the video and we can get into the questions. Let's begin. If you followed the previous 2391 video, you will know the style. We will show you a question, ask you to pause the video whilst you find the answer and then move to the next slide. This will give you the correct answer and also show you how we worked out the answer which is so important when it comes to you understanding how to answer the questions and getting them right. Question 1 asks, for circuit number 3, using the data provided in the test results, what is the actual ZSM and what is the maximum permitted ZSM? There are four possible answers shown, A, B, C or D, and you should choose the most appropriate for the question. You will notice the use of ZSM for measured ZS. Tabulated values are shown in the wiring regulations book, but these numbers are not relevant when measuring with your test meter. We need to make an adjustment, the 80% rule as it is called, to convert tabulated into measured. To find the measured value, multiply the tabulated value in the wiring regulations by 0 0.8. Table B6 of the on-site guide has already converted all the data into measured values. Just make sure that you are working from the correct tables according to what the question asks. Pause the video and answer the question before continuing. To answer this question, we will need the formula shown at the top. ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. To calculate the actual ZSM, what the real values are in this circuit, we need ZE, which is shown at the top of the chart as 0 0.3 ohms, and R1 plus R2, also from the chart, which is 1.67 ohms. Add the two together, and we have ZS, 1.97 ohms. And that's the first half of this question. Now, what is the maximum ohms that this circuit can be? In a healthy circuit, the actual should be less than the maximum permitted value. We will find the maximum measured ZS in table B6 of the on-site guide. Find B-type breakers, find 16 amps, and where the row and column cross is the answer 2.2 ohms. Our answer then should be answer C. 
The actual is 1.97 ohms and maximum is 2.2 ohms. The actual is less than the maximum and this part of the testing is satisfactory. Let's have a look at question 2 now. This time the question asks calculate R1 plus R2 for circuit number 1 and calculate the actual ZSM. Pause the video, find the answers and make a choice. This is a ring circuit and at the top is the formula that you need. Little r1 and little r2 are given in the chart. Simply add them together and divide by 4 to find r1 plus r2. So 0 0.9 plus 1.5 is 2.4. Divide this by 4 and we have our answer. r1 plus r2 is 0 0.6 ohms. Now calculate what the actual ZSM should be. The formula at the top of the page is the one to use. ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. Well, ZE is given on the chart as 0 0.3 ohms and we have just calculated R1 plus R2 as 0 0.6 ohms. Add them together and ZSM is 0 0.9 ohms. Our answer is D. How easy is that? Just answer the question one stage at a time. Next is question three, and one that is very likely to be asked. We are required to calculate the effective insulation resistance for the four circuits shown and to comment on our findings. The effective resistance is the value of all the parallel resistances in the installation. Again, pause the video, do the calculation, and choose an answer A to D. The parallel resistance formula is shown at the top. You'll remember from last time that we add all the reciprocals of the circuits together. In other words, we divide each individual insulation resistance into one, add them all up, and then divide that answer into one. Follow the calculations on this page to arrive at an answer of 1.93 megohms. The numbers have all been rounded up or down to limit the number of decimal places. Don't worry too much about this, it will always be very obvious which answer to choose. The wiring regulations state that if the effective insulation resistance of the installation is less than 2 megohms, then further investigation is required to establish the reasons for this low reading. So you should choose answer C, 1.93 megohms and requiring further investigation. Moving to question 4 now, you are simply asked for circuit 2, calculate R1 plus R2. Pause the video again and answer the question. This is a ring circuit again. Little r1 and little r2 are shown in the chart. Add them together and divide by 4. Our answer is 0 0.73 ohms and that's it. Our answer should be C, R1 plus R2 is 0 0.73 ohms. Now question 5. We must calculate the actual measured ZS for circuit 2 and find the maximum permissible measured ZS. Again pause the video whilst you find the answers. We've just calculated R1 plus R2 for this circuit, 0 0.73 ohms. Using the formula shown at the top of the page, the actual measured ZS or ZSM is ZE plus R1 plus R2. These numbers are 0 0.3 and 0 0.73, which added together give 1.03 ohms. That is the actual ZS, what we should be measuring with our test meter. Now find the maximum ZSM for a 32 amp Type-C breaker or RCBO. Pay attention to the type letter in the questions. They will not always be type B. They are testing your observational skills too. The maximum permitted ZSM is found in table B6 of the on-site guide or OSG. This is shown as 0.55 ohms and in this case the actual exceeds the maximum. But we do have the information to answer the question and we should choose answer A. Question 6 is next. We must calculate R1 plus R2 for the lighting circuit and 
find the maximum permitted ZSM. Pause the video, find the answers and then move on. The formula is as shown at the top. It's an easy rearrangement of the other formulas. We've been given ZS and we've been given ZE. So R1 plus R2 is simply ZS minus ZE. 5.18 minus 0 0.3 is 4.88 ohms. It's that simple. Now look at table B6 in the on-site guide to find the maximum measured ZS for a 6 amp type B RCBO. This is shown as 5.87 ohms and it's no more difficult than that. If you can find the right page in the right book then you can find the right answer. So choose answer B. On to question 7. We are told that the times 1 RCD measurements are shown for each RCBO. The question simply asks us to comment on these numbers, nothing more. Pause the video, read each of the possible answers and make your choice. Although the wiring regulations specify that a times 5 test should be carried out, it is good practice to conduct a times 1 test as well. The reason for this is that sometimes an RCD device will pass a times 5 test because of the higher test current, 150 milliamps in this case, but will fail the times 1 test due to the lower test current at just 30 milliamps. Without performing a times 1 test, you may be leaving the customer exposed to potential harmful shock currents of up to 150 milliamps and nobody knows until it happens. The on-site guide, part 11.3, section B, specifies that at 100% of the tripping current, or times 1, a non-delay type device should open in less than 300 milliseconds. And all these devices meet that criteria. They all pass. Our choice then should be answer B. All RCD readings are satisfactory, they are all less than 300 milliseconds. And lastly, question 8. The insulation resistance fault on circuit 2 has been repaired and the result is shown. We are asked to calculate the new insulation resistance for the whole of the installation. Again, pause the video and answer the question. We will need to use the reciprocal formula for parallel resistance again, as shown at the top. Follow the calculations through and notice that we have rounded the individual numbers to just three decimal places. Your rounding of numbers may be very slightly different to mine, but still close enough. We should have an answer of about 50 megohms. Anything around 47 to 50 megohms will direct us to the right answer. Our choice is answer D, 50 megohms, as this is the closest to our calculation. Notice that it is 50 with a capital M. This is 50 million ohms of resistance. We should not choose the small m. This is milli ohms or thousandths of an ohm. There is a billion times difference in the answers. 50 megohms with a capital M. Watch out for this in the exams. They will try and catch you out with it. And there it is. We hope that you've enjoyed these assessment practice questions. Do attempt each question in this practice video and especially in the exam proper. Do revisit these questions and solve them again. All practice is good practice. It all helps in the exam. Different exam bodies will each have their own slightly different style, but understanding one will always help with the understanding of another style of question. The key to passing is to know your subject and to keep learning. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on Return 
and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector. Page 2, page 3, 4 and so on that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.